Hello everyone, my name is Yang Li, and it's my pleasure to present our ADC paper, Graph-Based Relation-Aware Representation Learning for Closely Matching Series Video. Well, in recent years, a number of fashion-oriented online communities, such as Polyball and Chicktopia, have emerged and gained much attention which provides a very good platform for people who are pursuing to dress up properly and in fashion. However, there are numerous clauses. It is hard for everyone to have a good sense of aesthetics. So, the close matching recommendation has become a practical problem that drives the researchers to explore various machine learning techniques for the code of fashion. Well, the target of closely matching, as illustrated in the slide, is to predict whether the given outfit is a compatible one or not. Each outfit consists of several fashion items, including tops, bottoms, shoes, bags, and so on. Well, the key challenge of closely matching problem is visual understanding and compatibility model. There exist a number of studies here, I categorize them into two branches, pairwise learning and setwise learning. For pairwise learning, the compatibility notions are learned through chaining on each pair of observed compatible fashion items. One typical method is the misnet. The chain model is through con con constructed triplets. Each chaining triplet contains a compatible pair and incompatible pair. The target is to make the distances between compatible item vectors closer to each other than the incompatible ones in a latent style space via a triplet objective function. However, such kind of methods treat each pair of items being compared independently, which makes the final compatibility prediction merely rely on two item features. For setwise learning approaches, they try to capture the relationships among fashion items within an outfit. So typically, they fit a set of fashion items into their model and generate the final outfit representation. One representative method is by RST. The fashion items are fed into a bidirectional LSTM one by one at each time step. The final hidden state from that LSTM is used as the representation of the entire outfit, and that will be used for the compatibility prediction. Although using LSTM can somehow capture underlying relationships and contextual information among items, outfits do not naturally have sequential information. So, using sequence models may result in suboptimal performance. Well, based on the limitations of previous work, our work is mainly motivated by two points. Firstly, many fashion items appear in several design outfits, hence it's valuable to explore high-order compatibility relationships. So, instead of constructing the chaining instances in pairwise or setwise manner, we propose to model item interactions through graph data structure, as it can better reflect the complex relations among items. Secondly, in reality, people usually focus on different aspects of clothes from different categories. For example, people are more likely to focus on color and material for blouses and pants, while they may pay attention to shape and color for jeans and shoes. So, the framework we propose is named as Graph-Based Type Relational Neural Network. Alright, this is the overall structure of our proposed method, an encoder for item representation generation by exploring k-hop neighbor information using graph convolutional network, and a decoder for compatibility prediction through edge label prediction. Now, I will elaborate the details of both parts. I will first start with the encoder part. Basically, the main flow of encoder is firstly feeding images into a pre-chained convolutional net network 
In our paper, we use ResNet for extracting meaningful information from item images into continuous vectors. After we get item vectors, we feed them into a multi-layer GCN. The final representation of each item is the output from that GCN. Well, we use GCN to capture K-hop neighbor information. Since we think when comparing two fashion items, instead of only considering both item features independently, like the pairwise methods, we want to get the information of other items that are also compatible with these two items as references. So the left part is an illustration of K-hop neighbors. When K equals zero, it means that no neighbor information are considered. And one-hop neighbors are represented as blue nodes in the picture, while the green node is a two-hop neighbor of the red node. To calculate the item representations, we first use a pre-trained CNN model denoted as function g along with parameter phi to transform product images into latent vectors. Then we construct the item graph. In the graph, two nodes are connected if they are observed to be compatible. So we get normalized Laplacian using the formula in the second step. Then in the third step, the first layer of GCN only keep original item representations, denoted as Z0. And the second layer, Z1, is used to aggregate one-hop neighbor information. When k is larger than 1 for the k-hop neighbor aggregation, we use the following formula to calculate it. Now, the final item representation is computed through the sum of each layer. While each GCN layer has separate trainable weight parameters theta. Well, for decoder, um, let's first record the motivation part we have mentioned. People focus on different aspects of fashion items from different categories. Therefore, in this paper, we propose to mask vector to help the model to concentrate on different types. As an example illustrated in the right hand side, suppose an item vector has six dimensions, and each dimension represents different features of the item, including color, pattern, size, and shape. By applying a mask vector which has the same size of the item vector, the model is able to pay attention to some more important features according to their types. As shown in the left part, we define a type relation as a pair of complementary types. For example, bottoms and shoes is one type of relation, while tops and bottoms is another one. For each relation, we have a separate mask vector. So in this case, the relation between x1 and x2 is tops and bottoms. Therefore, the compatibility score calculation of item x1 and x2 is to get um, the absolute value of masked item features. And then it will go through a multi-layer perceptron. The final output from a sigmod function making the score ranged between 0 and 1. To train the model, we consider the training task as graph completion task. Specifically, denotes the epsilon as the set of um, edges in the constructed item graph. So, we randomly select a set of edges from epsilon denoted as epsilon positive, and remove them from the constructed item graph to generate a new incomplete graph. These selected edges are regarded as positive training samples. Moreover, to keep the class balance during the training, we also randomly sample the same number of negative edges from the graph. So the final training set is the combination of both positive and negative edge sets. 
We optimize our model by the cross entropy loss of the predicted edge label and the supervision label. So one for positive label and zero for negative label, label respectively. <coughs> Moreover, um, to improve the robustness of our model, we introduce edge dropout recreation. So we randomly mask some edges from the training graph in every training epoch to make the model more robust when less contextual information is given. In the experiment, we evaluate our model on a public fashion dataset, Polyvo. It contains more than 21,000 outfits crawled from polyvo.com. We use uh, we, we use our model on two tasks. The first task is filling the blank. This task is to select the most suitable item from four candidates to form a compatible outfit. We also designed a hard version of this task where all four candidates are from the same category. The metric we use for evaluation in this task is accuracy. The second task is compatibility prediction. This task requires the model to output an overall compatibility score ranging between 0 and 1 for the given outfit. The test set contains around 3,000 compatible and incompatible instances, respectively. The negative outfits are generated by randomly replacing items in outfits with other fashion items. In the hard version, the ground choose is replaced by the item from the same category. The evaluation metric we use in this task is AUC. The value of AUC represents the probability of a randomly chosen positive instance to be ranked higher than a negative one. We compare our model with four baseline methods. So MISNET, a pairwise method that minimizes distance of compatible image features and maximize the distance between incompatible images through contrastive loss. BIOSTM is a setwise method. TACSN is a pairwise method that utilizes the type of information in, um, by constructing type-aware subspaces. GAE is a baseline method that only applies multiple GCN layers for fashion compatibility modeling. And this is a table of the performance comparison with other baseline methods. It can be observed that our method achieved the best performance over all cases. CMSNET and by LSTM methods perform poorly, meaning because they do not take type information into consideration and they also uh, and the sequence model also fail to <coughs> capture the complex compatibility relationship. The graph based baseline GAE we can find that using graph data structure can achieve much better performance. Our approach um, received better performance than LS by LSTM. This proves that modeling outfit data in graph structure can better capture high-order relationships. Well, compared with GAE, which is also a graph-based method, our performance benefits from type relational masks. It helps the model identify subtile patterns from different types. Moreover, we also investigated how the hyperparameters affect the performance of our model. Firstly, we conducted experiments on different dimensionality. We started from 150 dimensions of latent item vectors, rising up to 550 dimensions. It can be observed that the performance boosts when D increases from 250 to 300. This means that when the number of dimensions is um, lower than three dimension, 300, um, the model cannot express each fashion item well. 
And um, the model is not sensitive to the dimensionality when the dimension is larger than 300. We also investigated the effect of edge dropout rate. It can be observed that the model achieves the best performance when the dropout rate is set to be 0 0.05. And a large value of edge dropout will make the model hard to learn the global topology and thus degrade the performance rapidly. Finally, we investigated the effect of K-hop neighbors. We test our model when K equals 0 to 3. It can be observed that when K equals 0, which means no neighbor information is aggregated, the performance on two tasks is much worse than incorporating K-hop neighbor information. When k equals 3, the performance is slightly worse than k equals 2, which mainly because too much neighbor information will result in the feature of a smoothing problem. To conclude our work, we incorporate type-to-type -type relational information in graph neural network for fashion compatibility modeling by exploring edge relation labels. Second, we design type-aware pairwise masks for the compatibility measurement. Third, we introduce an edge-wise regularization training strategy to increase the performance and robustness of a model. Finally, extensive experiments have been conducted for the fill-in-the-blank and compatibility estimation tasks, which demonstrates the superiority of our approach. Well, as for some questions, for the question one, the answer is yes. Since we use masks which have the same dimension size as the item features rather than using the matrices for the type of wear modeling, our model's computation complexity will not increase exponentially. However, in our paper, we train our model over the entire graph without many batch training strategy. Therefore, to train on a large-scale dataset, we have to train with random edge sampler to learn the partial topology of the item graph at each batch. And obviously, we have to sacrifice the performance for training on very large dataset. For the second question, well, due to the memory limitation, we cannot evaluate our model on very deep K-hop neighbor modeling using a single GPU. But I think the performance will degrade when the k is very large, since more neighbors means that less self-information will be kept in each node. So the model will experience severe self-information loss when the k is very large. And for the third question, the answer is yes. Although we only use the visual information in our model, it is possible to create a common visual semantic space for the, con for the textual and visual modalities, and more interesting texts can be proposed. For example, like recommending matching shoes for a pair of jeans based on the user's textual requirements. And I believe I will consider it as my future work. Thank you very much.